dear God, be founded in your word. It is our prayer. Lord, start with the church in America. And we thank you that you will start in our lives and in this church as we start this new year, surrendering our lives to you. Oh God, Lord, for those business people, Lord, they surrender a calendar that is empty of which you will fill up their God. Lord, we pray, oh Lord, we submit to you all that is in our lives that are visibly, seemingly empty, but Lord, you will fill it, dear God. And this is our prayer. Have your way as we surrender our lives to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give all the hand of praise to you. Say hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And uh, <clears throat> Happy New Year. I'm excited of what we're going to embark this coming uh, weeks. As a matter of fact, in these two months, we will embark uh, talking about faith. Say the word faith. Hello. So, this year could be exciting or excruciating for you. But let faith help you and faith help us to face the coming year and the years ahead of us. So, before our speaker comes, let's watch a video. Praise God. As an introduction for our Daring Faith campaign, I chose a topic called Faith That Can Face the Future. It's nice to start the new year talking about faith because you're going to face challenges in 2016. How many of you knows that? You're going to face challenges and we have to face it squarely. Some of you heard this before that one of my traumatic experiences when I was a teenager, especially when I had my breakout, and my elder brother told me, how can you face your problem if the problem is your face? You know, this is true. I'm not offended. I didn't know what it meant. Um, but today we're going to face the challenges of 2016. And winning 2016 or succeeding in 2016 is not according to the arrangement of your face, but the arrangement of your faith. You see, one of these days we will give an accounting before God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews is that nothing in all creation is hidden in the sight of God or in the eyes of God. And everything is uncovered and laid bare to whom we are going to give an account. We're going to have an accounting with God. So therefore, we must not just count the years. I tell people during their birthdays, just don't count the years, but can you make the years count? And let me tell you this, that the years would only count in your life if it is a life lived in faith. 
The only kind of life that counts in heaven and in eternity is a life of faith. If there is anything that we need to grow, grow our portfolio, our income, our insurance, or anything that we need to grow in this life, it has to be faith. Because that's the only thing in this world that will make or will count in eternity. Your faith. Now, the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 17, this good news tells us how God makes us right in His sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. That means this gospel or the good news that we can be right with God only by living in faith. In other translation is the just or the righteous should live by faith. In order to please God, it's only through faith. The Bible even says in Hebrews chapter 6, 11 verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please God. Whoa, that's big time. So therefore we're going to spend time in talking about faith because without faith it is what? It is what? It is impossible to please God. Therefore, there's no other option in life to please God. And we are all sh should be performers to an audience of one. Because at the end of our lives, we are going to face our Creator who sees our lives to the present, past, present, and future. And we will have an accounting with Him. And the only life that really counts now and eternity is by faith. And this verse continues on saying that those who would earnestly seek Him, He rewards. Not only that faith pleases God, but it's only thing on earth that we do that will be rewarded. How many of you would like to be rewarded? Hello? Do you want, we have this term, an exercise in futility. A life without faith is an exercise in futility. Therefore, faith is essential. And if there is anything that we need to groom and to grow, it has to be what? Your faith. So this coming uh, weeks, we would like you to be grounded in your faith. Knowing more about faith. Number one. Number two, we want you to grow in your faith by obeying the source of your faith. And lastly, that you will go in faith. Amen? That's the deal. I don't want to say, speak another sermon about faith. But we would like people who would live lives of faith that they will expect the miracles of God. Amen? Because when you have faith, there will always be miracles. Amen? Do you believe that? Because faith without its evidence of miracles is dead. Amen? The book of James says, without faith, we said, uh, faith without works is dead. It should manifest in transform lives, transform circumstances, transform situations, transform financial situations, in, and so on in, and so forth. Faith and miracles go hand in hand. So therefore, in our series of faith, we expect and I believe you will experience miracles. Amen? Uh, we, uh, we will, I will share on as, the, as, as we continue on. Now, I like that when he said that, that without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. I want to have a rewarding kind of life. Hello? Amen? So what in the world is faith? Simple. Faith is seeing from God's point of view. That's all it is. Amen? Faith is seeing from God's point of view. As I said many uh, months ago, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing can do with your past. 
you cannot change the past but you can change the way you look at it amen you can change the way you look at it that's the only thing so experience as a matter of fact doesn't make you grow or made better but evaluated experience do amen that every uh, stumbling block becomes a stepping stone that every loose